Conversation lets the conversations peace. I love you. And God, God bless you. Stevie Wonder bringing this crowd to an emotional height this afternoon as he recited the words all for one and one for all. As he was speaking, I was thinking about the 20th anniversary recognition of the 1963 March on Washington. At the other end of this ball, Stevie Wonder in 1983, I recall very distinctly CNN was just on the air for three years and he entertained the audience then, singing happy birthday to Dr. Martin Luther King. And now, 1995, here in October, on the western wall of the United States Capitol building, he said, this day and this celebration is better than any, bigger rather than any one leader. He said it is God's plan. Democratic Congressman Quisi Infumi of Maryland has been sitting here watching and listening. What, what was going through your mind as you listened to Stevie Wonder? Bernie, it's an amazing day and it's really it kind of leaves you without words. If you could imagine this entire mall being absolutely silent when he spoke, just hundreds of thousands of people listening, touching each other, embracing, and agreeing that the significance of this is larger than any one individual. Perhaps it is, as Stevie said, God's plan. You talk to this crowd about political empowerment, and I want to ask you a very basic question. Anytime this number of people assemble for any reason, you as a politician must think of possibilities. What do you see here? Well, the possibilities are enormous, and the probabilities are even more stark. I think what you're going to see because of one of the tenets of this march is a tremendous effort to register people. Not necessarily Democratic, not necessarily Republican, not necessarily Independent, but to register them so that they then become empowered to make political changes in their own communities. And so if this sends out any message at all to the political establishment is that this is a force that must be dealt with. It's not a negative force. It's not one that's self-serving but it is in the greatest tradition of America. These are people who have come, as the Constitution says, to peacefully assemble for the redress of their grievances, and the political possibilities are just beyond anything anyone can imagine right now. Do you see possibilities? Don't be offended by this question, but do you see possibilities for the Republican Party? I see possibilities for Democrats, for Republicans, for independents, for anyone who really understands that if they are prepared to move out of governing in a vacuum and are prepared to embrace the hopes and the dreams and the aspirations of all people, the African-American, our Latino brothers, our Hispanic and Asian brothers, and our Native American brothers, that there will be a mutual sort of reach, and that reach will be coming from men like this across the country who are prepared to reach out, regardless of what their party affiliation is, to support people who in turn support them. You know, people watching this from around the world and across the United States might wonder, where has all this energy been? It's been pent up and fed up and pushed up in the hearts and in the minds of a lot of people, most of whom are here. It hasn't been a negative energy, but it has been so positive that it has almost been like a volcano, and it has erupted this day, not with violence or with drugs or with despair, but it has erupted in a beautiful display of absolute unity. I've had people come up to me today who were not black, who have said they themselves are moved by the kind of dignity and the grace and the courtesy and the pride that the men here today feel. And that's something that we should never lose. And before I leave you, a very personal question. How many times have you felt like crying today? Many, many times. And I've done that with my sons earlier, and I expect that I will do it again before it's all over. It's that moving. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you, Bernie. I appreciate it. We're going to pause, and we'll be back in a moment in the United States Capitol, Washington, D.C.
Perhaps it's because we offer our business class passengers complimentary limousines, sleeper seats with up to 15 inches of extra legroom, and personal video screens at every seat. Or it may just be our refreshingly different British personality. Whatever the reason, it seems we put a few noses just a bit out of joint. Upper Class by Virgin Atlantic Airways. Five years ago, did you imagine you'd be doing this one day? How could I? It took you three weeks to call me back. It was a test. <laughs> Married. married. How did I do? Today, in hospitals everywhere, medicine will be mixed, linens washed, and babies will get their first taste of a new world, all with the help of one company. Hey, Culligan Man. Culligan, the world's source for better water. News travels fast. This just end a headline That's news. why people turn to Headline News for continuously updated news. Because it doesn't matter what hour of the day it is, the time for Headline News is always now. I want to know you all my life. TNT presents Jamie Lee Curtis in a movie about a generation coming together, falling apart, and coming together again. The Heidi Chronicles. See the special encore performance Wednesday night at 10 on TNT. A sea of black hands holding green American dollar bills, responding to the podium's request that contributions be made. And receptacles, as they're being called, are circulating through this crowd, people circulating containers to collect this money. To the west of me and way down on the mall is CNN's John Holloman. John? Bernie, I must tell you, the, uh, the spirit here, the atmosphere here is, uh, is unlike I have felt on this mall in a long, long time. You know, as I do, that the two of us have been out here for many large gatherings of people, but this has got a special sense to it, a special spirit. Joining me, two people from the uh, Maryland suburbs of Washington who've been down here for several hours and walked around and um, talked to other people here. One of them is Steve Alexander. Steve, you're from Frederick, Maryland. You're um, in the audiovisual business. You, you've been here. You've seen this. Um, tell me what drew you here in the first place. And I also want you to talk to me about uh, what you were feeling while Stevie Wonder was talking about 10 minutes ago. Well, first of all, I'd like to say hello to Bernie uh, Shaw because he's uh, a man very admired within our community. Uh, what drew me here was a spiritual call that was been unprecedented in my life. It was as though I was a salmon being called back to spawn in my spawning grounds. Uh, because of the community problems with, we have within the inner city, uh, it became a call that I could not deny. Even though the currents around it, and we might say some of the leaders that we don't agree, we don't agree with, with their philosophies, it's the current around the salmon, but the salmon must go on. And that's where we are. And when we talk about Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. ever since I was a young man back in the early 70s, Stevie Wonder has been like a mentor to many of our generation. The music that he sang inspired us to be, be responsible, uh, to do the things that we know we had to do to be successful. Yeah. And to hear him speak was, I can't tell you what the words would say yeah. to hear him speak. See, while we were standing here uh, waiting to go on, you saw um, probably 200,000 at least people raised dollar bills out there in the, in the mall behind you. And now people are asking folks to give up those dollar bills for the cause. What, uh, what do you think of that? I think uh, the dollar bill is the essence, it's the foundation of respect within America. I think if you're going to build anything, you must organize your dollar bills. Because if you got a million people here, a million and a half people, that's a million and a half dollars. 
that has gone back to support something that we hope will create a foundation that we can go back into our communities with, that we can go back and say, let's, if we created a dollar, um, create a million and a half dollars in one day, why can't we create our own banks within the inner cities that would allow entrepreneurs as myself, who's just starting off in business, who's been denied bank loans, because I do not have a, the correct eye color of skin, I believe, when I walk into the bank. I don't have the confidence and the comfort level that one might have if I was of Caucasian persuasion. Mm. And I don't say this in a malice form because I don't want to say the old cliche, but I go to church with many white brethren who love me and I love them. But the experience of being black in America is unprecedented. Ever since I was a child, my mother told me that I had to work twice as hard, maybe to only go as half as four. Even New Gingrich have come to say that these are true words today. Second class, citizenship, second class citizenship, we are saying we're not gonna pass that down to our children as it's been passed down to us. This is our call for here, because I cannot look my son in the eye and tell him that I'm not handing you down second class citizenship. The glass ceilings are there. I cannot run for president of the United States because of my heritage. That's a taken. I hope Colin Powell makes a difference and in America stand up and say, here's an honorable man. Here's a man of integrity. No longer will we be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of his character. You wish General Powell were here today, Steve? I wish Colin, I wish Mr. Powell would have came along with the rest of the salmon and said, no matter what the current around it might have been, this is a call for our young kids. This is a call for our younger lost generation whose blood flows in the streets. This is a call that had to be heard. And I'm sure Mr. Powell in his heart wished that the rhetoric that caused him not to be here would have allowed him to be here. He's a great hope for us. All right, see, thanks for talking to me. I'll probably come back to you in a minute. We have another guest, Melissa Milling. Melissa, you've, uh, you've been here for a couple of hours and, uh, and you've experienced uh, what uh, many of the hundreds of thousands of men who are here have experienced, I guess. Is the experience for a black woman in America different from the experience of a black man? I would certainly think yes, in the sense that we as black women tend to go a little bit further in our education. We tend to go a little bit further in the workplace period. And I think that a lot of the black men stop and they're not going as far as they possibly could. So therefore, I think that the unification that we're seeing here today is definitely a positive that a lot of our black men need. We need to pull together. We need to support our black men and our black men need to support us as women. Is that why you're here? Yes, definitely. I'm here to support our black men and here to stand up and say I'm a black woman and we want to work together. It's a unity type of situation. We want to be together. We want to work together. We want to prosper together. Yeah. What has your major impression been as you've walked around and talked to the black men here today? It's been very positive. Everybody's in an upbeat, a very religious state. We're working, just kind of working together. Everybody has a positive attitude and is hopeful for the future for all of us. Yeah. Very is this, I, mean, I don't go, I never go to gatherings that are all black, I can't get in, but uh, compared to other gatherings where you have been, is, is the atmosphere here remarkably different? I would think that it would be, it's very different, it's very different than anything I've ever experienced. I wasn't here for the first march because I wasn't that old at the time, but this is just amazing. It's amazing how many black men from all walks of life, all, eth all different um, age groups, children, older men, people that are old enough to be my great-grandfather, they're all here together, working together. It's, right. it's great. Melissa and Steve, thank you both for joining us here today on CNN. Bernie, there's, there's a great spiritual something that's going on out here on the mall. I should let you know that I'm about nine blocks down the mall from where you are, but if it's anything like this up where you are, it's going to be a big day in our country. Well, indeed, John, the spirit is very infectious. You can feel it as you walk among the throng here. A very vigorous collection effort continues. Boxes, anything that contain money, can contain money, are being circulated throughout this crowd now. And when we come back in our live coverage from Washington, we'll hear from a voice in Chicago that disagrees with what is happening here in the nation's capital.
There's a lot to think about when you're driving a car. That's why before they designed the i30, Infinity videotaped the eye movements of test drivers. Then they used these videos to help optimize the placement of controls in instruments, so that when you're driving an i30, the road is what you tend to see the most. It's just one of the many features on the i30 that deserves a closer look. Introducing the York Triathlon, a new kind of natural gas heating and cooling system that lowers energy costs as it increases comfort. Gold medal performance for your home. York, proud sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. Identify yourself. Do you go for the gusto? Go out on a limb? Go full speed ahead? Go where no man has gone before? Or are you a cornflake eater? Guess not. You go for the adrenaline-pumping, milk-defying taste of Wheaties. Made with wall-to-wall, -wall, indoor, outdoor, toasty, tasty, 100% whole wheat. A whole mouthful of flavor. It's the whole Megillah. So for taste that goes all out, go for the over-the-top taste of whole wheat Wheaties. Now on the commemorative Calvert Can Jr. box. I know what I like and don't like. I don't like irregularity. It slows me down. I don't like harsh chemical laxatives. I like natural. I like Metamucil Natural Fiber Therapy. It won't artificially stimulate your insides with harsh chemicals. I don't like those. Mix is easy, goes down easy. A safe and easy way to get the extra fiber I need. And it works just the way I expect from Metamucil, to get the body up and running. <laughs> I like that. Metamucil, the natural choice for regularity. 17.9%, 15.5, 18.2. It really does add up, doesn't it? Hi, I'm Jim Palmer. If you're a homeowner carrying big credit card balances from month to month, the Money Store has a better solution. With a home equity loan from the Money Store, you can pay off all of your credit card balances as well as your auto and your other loans. And the interest is usually tax deductible. So don't let those high rate bills keep adding up. Pay them off with a home equity loan from the Money Store. Call 1-800-LOAN-YES. is Imam Dean Muhammad. He is the son of the late Elijah Muhammad, the founder of the Nation of Islam. Uh, welcome to our live coverage of what is happening here. Your attitude yes, about you. this assemblage. Well, <clears throat> uh, the assembly, um, we have to uh, be with them and, and our, my, our prayers are with them. Uh, but the whole idea um, is not supported by myself. I don't support it. Um, I believe that much more could have been gained if we had uh, directed all of this energy uh, toward the uh, problems that we have in our personal life, in our family life, and in our neighborhoods. Um, uh, I would have uh, suggested that uh, leaders uh, met together first and discuss uh, the needs in our life and in our communities, um, and then presented that to the, to the public later, after we had put, uh, gotten our, uh, put our heads together um, and uh, reviewed history and uh, tried to benefit and learn from uh, what has happened in our history here in America as uh, black people, African Americans, uh, trying to improve, make improvement, put improvements upon our life and improve our image in the eyes of our own selves and in the eyes of the white world or, the, or other people. I think we could have gotten our heads together and we could have uh, demonstrated to the public, to the, to the public, that uh, we ourselves want to atone, that the leaders want to, want to atone. We, we need a day of atonement for ourselves. And the uh, leaders also uh, should demonstrate responsibility uh, themselves, uh, lead by example by demonstrating ourselves that we are responsible for our actions, for our ideas, and for our words that we put out in the public. Because our time is preciously short, I want to ask you two very brief questions. One, do you have any fundamental disagreement with Minister Louis Farrakhan? Well, certainly. Uh, he's, uh, he tends to uh, uh, keep the same religious idea that the Nation of Islam introduced into the black community uh, 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 50 years ago. Um, uh, that idea is far from being Islam, and uh, he's, he, um, certainly he's aware that... Uh, that is not Islam. Uh, we, yes, we have, difference, we have fundamental differences, 
and um, we also have differences as to how we should uh, improve our social life and, our, uh, and bring a, a better sense of business into our community. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think we have several uh, real fundamental differences. Okay, and, and my other question is, would you have rather seen this kind of energy, this kind of assemblage, this kind of media attention devoted to the other problems you alluded to rather than to a march on one day in October? Uh, exactly. I think these uh, big uh, uh, marches uh, are big uh, mass gatherings. Uh, they give us a quick charge and uh, after a few weeks the charge is gone and we find ourselves in the same situation again. I think we need to do more planning. Leaders need to get together and do more planning. Okay, thank you, Imam Dean Mohammed. I wanted to get to the essence of your thoughts. I apologize for our lack of more time, but we certainly thank you for joining us on CNN from Chicago. We appreciate being with you. <laughs> thank you. And we'll be right back with more live coverage from the western steps of the Capitol building of the United States of America. Tonight on Larry King Live, Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. Tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. If you could get 10 cents a minute on long-distance calls and anything else in the world you wanted, what would that be? I'd like 10 cents a minute and a new car. I'd take 10 cents a minute and a new boyfriend. 10 cents a minute and some cash back? You've got it. There's something new in Sprint Sense, cash back. Call now and get 10 cents a minute rates on state-to-state -state calls all evening, all night, and all weekend long. And you'll be rewarded with 10% cash back for every dollar you spend. Cash back? Cool. That's something new. I like it. The way I call, that could really add up. There's no limit to the amount of cash back you can earn. Month after month, you'll see your cash add up, so it pays to stay with Sprint Sense. And when you sign up right now, Sprint will even switch you for free. 10 cents a minute and cash back? Getting cash back's great. Can I get the boyfriend, too? Sorry, Sprint can't do everything. Well, not yet. Get 10 cents a minute now and 10% cash back every year with Sprint Sense. Call now. 1-800-621-7499. Inside Politics, 4 Eastern on CNN. I'm Kitty Pilgrim at the New York Stock Exchange. Blue chip stocks are taking a breather following Friday's 28-point rally. Right now, the Dow Jones Industrial is trading in the minus column most of the session. They haven't fallen much. Right now, the Dow is down 10 points at 47.83. The broader and secondary market indexes are all mostly lower. Now, several of the nation's largest banks reporting quarterly earnings today. Chase Manhattan, which is planning to merge with chemical banks, said profits fell 7%. But earnings at North Carolina's Nations Bank jumped 23%. Los Angeles-based First Interstate profits surged 83%. And First Chicago's earnings increased 35%. Melville is selling its discount clothing business, Marshalls, to TJX Company. The deal is valued about $550 million in cash and stock. Melville will take a nearly $200 million fourth quarter charge. Now, TJX is the parent of TJ Maxx retailers. I'm Kitty Pilgrim at the New York Stock Exchange. We will continue with live coverage of the Million Man March in a moment. Around the world today, industries once owned by governments are increasingly owned by investors. That privatization leads to And by advising governments in privatizations, Merrill Lynch is helping lead the way. Better life for our people. Further evidence that for all our clients, the quality of our advice makes a difference. The different is Merrill Lynch. It's midnight. My family's asleep getting their rest, but me, I'm in pain and I'm wide awake. I felt a little uneasy about taking something, you know, what I feel like myself in the morning. But then I tried Tylenol PM. It stops my pain, it helps me sleep, so next morning I'm still up before them. Hey, sleepyhead. Thanks, sweetheart. Feeling rested, feeling good, like myself. Rest easy. It's Tylenol PM. 
Now also available in easy to swallow gel tabs. The vocabulary of the average person nearly stops growing by age 25. Don't let this happen to you. Because if your vocabulary is limited, your chances for success are limited. Verbal Advantage audio cassettes are your connection to success. They'll give you the words you need to get ahead. And it's so easy, because with Verbal Advantage, all you do is listen. For information, call 1-800-999-1991. That's 999-1991. When it comes to covering business worldwide, there's no substitute for experience. Backed by the global resources of television's largest news gathering organization. A commitment to reporting that's both timely and accurate. From Europe, Asia, and here at home. That's why only CNN can say, nobody covers the world of business like the people who cover the world. CNN Business News. Thank you for coming. America will never forget this day. Within the great federal complex of the United States government, upwards of a half million Americans work in support of their government, all branches. We've received word from some of the federal agencies. The Department of Energy reports that 40% of its employees did not show up for work today. The Department of Housing and Urban Development here, just a few blocks behind me, west of me, less than 50% attendance among their employees reported. And for those of you familiar with Washington, you know that one of the major thoroughfares downtown is K Street. It's a virtual canyon with office buildings on either side. The report from downtown K Street, virtually deserted. Among the hundreds of thousands of people here, Quinnell X, he is the national spokesman for Ghetto Boys and the Hip Hop Nation. Thanks for joining us. You've been very patiently waiting. And thank you, Mr. Shaw, for having me. Your thoughts? My thoughts today, Mr. Shaw, is that this is a monumentous occasion. No one ever dreamed that 30 years after the March on Washington by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that we would come back to D.C. with more than 250,000 people. But now we have over a million black men standing in a day of solidarity, united, sober, strong, not robbing, not stealing, and not killing each other, but standing united for a better tomorrow. Because you and I both know that today was built from yesterday, and tomorrow is built to determine on what we as a people do today. So all of those who are the naysayers who condemn this march, or who wouldn't march with the brothers, at least stand with the idea of the march of atonement and reconciliation. I'm wondering, as you've been sitting here and circulating among the crowd right here, have you been thinking of some lyrics, some rap lyrics, or possible lyrics for a hip-hop creation? Well, yes, the Hip Hop Nation has put together a compilation album called One in a Million, A Million Strong. The album will come out as soon as the march is over with, so look for it in stores before November 1st. Well, I, I'm just wondering, you as an artist, have you been creating in your own mind as you've been here this afternoon? Well, the brothers have created. Brand Nubian has created. The Goody Mob has created. The Ghetto Boys have created lyrics surrounding this march, along with Snoop Doggy Dog, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and Cam, and MC Ren. Where is the thinking right now on rap music? We're all familiar with the critical hits this genre has taken. Where does it stand right now, given what's happening in our very volatile society? Well, I say this, there are a number of our community leaders, grassroots leaders, and political leaders, and clergy leaders who condemn the rappers. But I say to those that are condemning the rappers, these are the children that your generation have produced. So if you will condemn us, you're condemning the fruit that falls from your tree. So before you condemn the fruit that falls from your tree, you must check the tree that bad that fruit. But I say that C. Dolores Tucker, the clergy grassroots leaders, they're brilliant black heads. But what good does it do to have a brilliant black head not connected to a black body? So don't condemn us, work with us, guide us, give us the right direction, and lead us by your example. But we will not allow Reverend Hammock, Pastor Polk Chop, Deacon Chickenfoot, or Bishop Coward to condemn the rappers because we can be the vanguard to bring forth musical change in our community. Is there anything in rap music in your judgment that bears refinement, that needs improvement? Of course, we all have room for improvement. For example? For example, certain lyrics of calling black women freaks, bitches, and hoes. That needs to be stopped. 
because the black woman, she's not a bitch. She is the mother of the universe. What's being done about that? Well, what's being done about that is this Million Man March today. This will be the vanguard to bring forth change in the hip-hop nation. Never before has this ever taken place to inspire the rappers to get up and do something and change their condition and change their lyrics. So if I hear you correctly, as I prepare to uh, thank you, as if I hear you correctly, you're saying that uh, we're in for some sea changes, some quantum changes. Most definitely, most definitely. We will, we will no longer lift every voice and sing, but we'll lift every black fist and swing. We must now start rapping revolution and not destruction. We're now Alex. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your thoughts. And thank you for having me, Mr. Sean. You're quite welcome. We'll be right back to Washington, D.C. with more live coverage. I told you you'd love it. You were right, sweetie. At one of the motel, I feel like an outdoorsman. Good night, honey. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? What is it? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Oh, boy. Honey? Uh, where's the Eric's and cellular phone? Oh, cute. I left it outside. What do you mean you left it outside? I got to walk and get it. Eric's and cellular phone. Because when life gets a little wild, you want a highly reliable Ericsson cellular phone. Hi. Uh, yeah, we're in a tent. There's some trees and there's a huge bear out there. The combination of the Nordic track exercise along with a low-fat diet has really helped me trim my waistline and my weight. When I first started working out with the Nordic track, I, I lost a lot of weight in a very short period of time. I went from 226 to 172 in just a few months. I look good. I feel good. I've gone down two dress sizes. I feel sensational. If you've ever wondered what a Nordic track workout can do for you, just listen to an owner. You want me to talk about my experience with Nordic Track? I had become a couch potato. We all know what they are. Ended up talking to my doctor who said I had to do two things. Watch my diet and exercise regularly. So as a result of getting on the Nordic Track, I brought my weight down considerably. I lost 12 pounds. Now I want you to go right out and buy one. Yeah. <laughs> Call now for your free video and brochure to learn how you can get on track with Nordic Track. Identify yourself. Do you go for the gusto? Go out on a limb? Go full speed ahead? Go where no man has gone before? Or are you a cornflake eater? Guess not. You go for the adrenaline-pumping, milk-defying taste of Wheaties. Made with wall-to-wall, -wall, indoor, outdoor, toasty, tasty, 100% whole wheat. A whole mouthful of flavor. It's the whole Megilla. So for taste that goes all out, go for the over-the-top taste of whole wheat Wheaties. Now on the commemorative Cal Ripken Jr. box. By the hundreds of thousands, they stand patiently. They listen very diligently here in the nation's capital as the Million Man March on Washington continues unfolding on a bright, sunny October afternoon. It's not as chilly as it was this morning, but we know what's going to come this afternoon. If you were with CNN a few hours ago, you know that our man Jeff Flock has been roaming around Cleveland. I especially liked the part when he was in Angie's Kitchen. The food looked good. I couldn't smell it through television. But Jeff Flock is, as I say, roaming around Cleveland, and let's call him in now. Jeff, tell us where you are and what you're doing. Well, Bernie, we took some peach cobbler to go, first of all, and I'll get to that after we're done here. We are on Cleveland's east side. This is the Huff neighborhood. Some might call part of it disadvantaged, but I am uh, amongst a group of men who, to a man, says they wish they were in Washington today. You wonder about what the impact of this march is. I guess the fact is you don't have to be in Washington to be in this march. That's true. I think as long as your mind is there and your heart is there, the people in Washington know that we support what they're doing. And today is one of the best days for the black man today because it shows that we do love and care about each other. What, uh, what do you hope the message is that gets across today? Well, I think that, you know, when you think in terms of Christ, when he talks about we're neither bond nor free male nor free male, we're all one in Christ Jesus, I think it's about coming together as one and uplifting him who has sent us so that we can put the family first, the institution that he's created. Now, you talk about Christ. Obviously, this is a march that was put together by Minister Farrakhan. Uh, doesn't matter what religion, doesn't matter what belief. Is that, is that the, the message here? The essence of the human being is that we're all creatures of one God. So 
man has divided himself. God didn't do that. So no matter who put the march together, when men come together, you know, a man here in America or in Huff is the same as a man in Germany or in China. There's responsibilities that fall on the shoulder, as we see here, the, the young man with his family. So it's not a matter of who puts together something. It's a matter of whether we understand the responsibility of what men should understand. I guess I want to go to our man with his hands full here. Uh, there are members of your community who have responsibilities like yours who perhaps don't meet them as well as you, perhaps not able to meet them as well. What, uh, what's the message? Well, all I got to just, just tell them again, make, you got to, first you got to feel good about yourself. And therefore, if you feel good about yourself, you're going to feel good about your kids, your wife, and, uh, you know, the rest of the, the black neighborhood. Yeah. Can anything be accomplished today? I mean, a lot of people are sitting there in Washington. You're here and elsewhere around this country. I'm willing to wager there are other people who wanted to be there in spirit, uh, are there in spirit. What can be accomplished with a march? Well, I think what it shows is that we come together as one for one common goal and to try and show the world that as black Americans, there's so much said about us not sticking together and we're all just doing our own thing that we can come together and, and prove a point and make a statement. And the one that I'd like to see is that we can become, be able to begin working together and quit being separate. You got any hope of that? I mean, in, in real terms, there's been a lot of division is it possible to work together for things to be different than they are now? Yeah, there's always a possibility for things to be different. It, it just takes uh, people to come together as one. Uh, we all need a common goal. And I think the Million Man March is making a statement that we, we can organize something that is positive and sets a good message for everybody. Talk about sending a message. We have uh, older gentlemen here as well as young. Uh, on the end, I know. Uh, how old are you, first of all? And uh, are you worried about the world you live in today and the community that you live in and the future that you face? Um, I'm 16, and, well, I'm not really worried. Um, let me see. I'm not really worried, but I'm, I'm glad about the march because it's showing people that positive black men can come to, you know, Black males can come together and do some positive instead of negative. We see a lot of negative, and maybe we do uh, sometimes uh, too good of a job at portraying the negative. Uh, but there is positive in your community? Yes. Yes, there's a lot of positivity in our community because, as we recall, in 1966, we was a victim of a riot here on Huff, you know. So I feel the march is good, but we got to look deep with inside ourselves, too, you know, make a progress with ourselves. And, you know, with the Huff Area Partners in Progress, we're doing that right now, the way I see it. I can't get away from this, obviously, without addressing uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan, who is uh, not everybody's favorite. Uh, give me a sense about Minister Farrakhan and the community. I, I hear that you're all behind the tenets of the march. What about the, the you're all behind the message. What about the messenger? In any situation, uh, especially this type of one here, you have more than just the minister there uh, conducting speeches. I don't think it's, it's too much emphasis being placed on the messenger as opposed to the message. If people concentrate on the message, they will be they will be heard. But currently, right now, the media is concentrating way too much on uh, Minister Farrakhan. Don't permit me to be guilty of that for one more second and ask for another response on Minister Farrakhan. <clears throat> Which again, I heard you young, ask the uh, young man with regard to the negativity and, and how the community is looked on. You know, it is not the black community that, that produces the guns, the dope, the alcohol that floods our community, that to divides and corrupts. So when we talk, and it's the same way as I, as, as I hear the young man talk about, it's not the man or the individual who brings the message, but the message. As here with, with what, what this young man was saying, when he was talking about Christ Jesus, peace be upon him, often, we look at the individual and don't take to heart the message. So a lot of times we look at the situation and don't look to identify like a doctor does when you come with him with an ache or a pain, he wants to identify the source. So if we look at the source, many times we'll find that it's not something that lies within, but that which lies without. And that's what we're trying to do in terms of this march, in terms to get this message out without... Um what is the message? What is the bottom line message that comes out of this today? I think the message is 
is for all black folks and all mankind, period. To, it's time to come together and make a change. As you know, we've been going through the, the racial uh, reactions for, for years, and I think this is, this is time for us to uh, come together, work together, and uh, be and get education together. Nobody deserves more support than you with your hands full. Good luck to you. Thanks all. Thanks all of you for uh, taking the time out to share it with us. Sure. Bernie, that's the latest from uh, Cleveland, the Huff neighborhood. Uh, all watching, all eyes on you in Washington there. Back to you. Thank you, Jeff Flock in Cleveland. Now to the podium in the Reverend Joseph Lowry of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. would have been if he had come to Atlanta and caught me sitting in my desk where Martin Luther King sat and had to ask me, why is it you are not in Washington? That would have been the tough question. It's easy for me to answer why I'm here. I'm here because I share the pain and anguish of the black community. I'm here because I feel the pain from the assault from without and our fault within. I'm here because one of three black males in their 20s are in trouble. I'm here because our house is on fire and my children are in the house and I come to help put out the fire and I don't care who else is bringing the water. I join with them to put the fire out in the black community. I'm here because I know that by the grace of God, a new wave of black solidarity is sweeping this nation a new height of moral integrity, a new depth of spirituality by the grace of God. We must leave this place with distinctions on one hand, but solidarity on the other. Solidarity when it comes to embracing liberation's lifestyle that make us free at last in this life, free to love ourselves, free to love our community, free from addiction to drugs, free from addiction to the abuse of our sexuality, free to seek economic empowerment and teach our dollars some sense. Let us go back home from this place, my brothers, renewed, regenerated, resurrected from the grave of violence and self-destruction to the resurrection of discipline and responsibility. Let's go home energized and energizing our churches, our organizations, free at last to support our businesses, to pool our resources, to walk together, vote together, invest together, free to become new creatures, to call our women beside us, to share leadership, to share power, to send a message for those who think the election last year was a mandate for malice. We have a message for them. We're not going back. We're not going to let anybody turn back the clock. We've marched too long, prayed too hard, wept too bitterly, bled too profusely, and died too young to let anybody turn back the clock on our journey to justice. God bless you, my brothers. Let us go home now. Let us go home now and work for that day when justice rolls down like waters and black will not be asked to get back brown can stick around, yellow will be mellow, the red man can get ahead, and white will be all right. God bless you, you beautiful black men. Brothers, let's get ready to go on up a little higher. Let's bring on from New York. The Reverend Joseph Brothers, Lowry of the Southern given Christian given Leadership given Conference. As he has been on the mall all day, so John Holloman continues to labor in the human vineyard that's behind me. John? Bernie, I'm Bernie, I've, uh, I'm here with a, a preacher, United Methodist Church preacher from South Central Los Angeles, Reverend Andrew Robinson Gaither. Reverend, you have, um, you and I have been talking here for about 10 minutes and listening to other speakers behind us on the podium, and you said to me this was a major spiritual thing that brought you here. Yes, I, I felt as a pastor that I was called to be here in the midst of, of this Million Man March, for it helps reaffirm for me my call to ministry as I relate to my community. I live and work in a community that is set in the midst of social issues. And this reaffirms for me my call. It reaffirms for me that we as a church have a job to do, and we can't be timid about it. Reverend, uh, we've got to take a quick uh, break back to Bernie Shaw. We've got some other news we've got to do. We'll come okay. back. Bernie? Thank you very much, John. 
Let's take you to the podium now. A minister from New York, the Reverend Al Sharpton of the National Action Network, is addressing this throng. And get our mothers. The political story of 94 was the angry white man voted in a new Congress. Well, get ready, America, for the story of 96 when the enlightened black man brings in a new Congress. It's time for Mr. Genridge and the angry white man who are angry at the wrong people. We are doubly unemployed. Why are you angry at us? Our icons are being demoralized. Why are you angry at us? So let the angry white man meet the enlightened black man that will join hands with other enlightened people and bring us another way. In 63, we had to march across the Red Sea, Reverend Wilson. Uh -huh. Well, in 95, we are headed to the Jordan. We don't have to backtrack. We can go forward. And why are you so surprised we're here? Did you think that we would continue to watch our images put down? Look at what they did to people from Michael Jackson all the way across the board. That just because they were people of color were desecrated and demoralized. Well, now if we've learned if we hold each other's hands, we can take care of our own Michael Jacksons. We can take care of our own young men. You see the brothers here, but what about the hundreds of thousands behind bars that couldn't come here? We got to stand up and free them too. OJ is home, but Mumi Abu Jamal ain't home. And we won't stop to all of our people that need a chance in an awkward and unbalanced criminal justice system can come home. I end by saying this. 1988, there was a preacher that ran for president named Pat Robinson. He got two million votes. There were those young people and ministers and others that took those two million votes and in 94 took America. Well, in 88, Jesse Jackson got 7 million votes. And his younger brothers and younger cousins can transform that with the energy given and mobilization given by Minister Farrakhan and others in leadership. And we can change 96. We can straighten out tricks in 96. We can straighten out tricks in 96 if we come alive in 95. So we join the minister. We join black men and black women and our leaders all over America saying, stand up, black man. I know it's hard to stand when you've been shackled, but stand up, black man. I know it's hard to stand when you've been beaten and bruised, but stand up, black man. Let your children, let your daughters, let them all over the world see us stand up together. We all live on one block. We may have different houses, but it's all the same block. Elijah Muhammad's house is on that block. Martin Luther King's house is on that block. Malana Karanga's house is on that block. But let me tell you something. When you set the block on fire, I don't have time to look at other houses' videos. It's time for all of us to come out together and save the block of black folk in America. Some of us will stand up and fight. Some of us won't switch. Some of us won't buckle or bow. As James Brown said, some of us rather die on our feet than live on our knees. Thank you and God bless you. Again, if you would please give me your undivided attention, a quick announcement again. For those children who were lost, particularly there were 12 children who were lost, they are now found and they are in unit number two. There should be a graphic on the television screen. In CNN the will continue its live coverage of the Million Man March on Washington. Some of our stations will break away and our coverage resumes very, very shortly.
tonight on Larry King Live, Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. Tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. Fifty years of the United Nations. One of the most familiar images of the UN is the blue beret of its peacekeepers. The first UN military observers monitored the truce in the 1948 Arab-Israeli fighting. In its first four decades, the UN monitored 13 peacekeeping operations around the world. But with the end of the Cold War and an upsurge in ethnic conflict, the number of peace operations has leapt to 37. With its higher profile, peacekeeping is now coming under greater scrutiny than ever before. But overall, in its first 50 years, the UN is credited with achieving scores of peaceful settlements. And in 1988, UN peacekeepers were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The Rhino. He's just one species. But if he goes, he could take a few things with him. Just a little piece of paper. But this card from the Boys and Girls Clubs has kept millions of young people off drugs, out of gangs, and in school. It's only a little piece of paper. It tells every kid who carries it that someone cares about what they do with their lives. You know, every day another 300 kids join the club, but there are thousands more who need help. Find out how you can put this card in the hands of a child and change that child's life. It's up to us. Support the Boys and Girls Clubs. This is CNN. Talk Back Live will not be seen today as we bring you live coverage of the Million Man March in Washington. To Minister Louis Farrakhan, to welcome to this podium our brother. A prime guest on Talk Back Live, which, as the announcer said, will not be seen, will be joining us here on CNN shortly, Merle Evers-Williams, the chair of the NAACP and the widow of the slain civil rights leader, Metgar Evers. We are into hour number eight of the Million Man March on Washington. This morning began with prayers. We've heard from school children. We've heard from many black officials. And Jesse Jackson now is coming to the podium, and we will be listening carefully to what he has to say. He has worked on this speech, and what he has to say is very sensitive. Organizing committee, support committees, host mayor, Marion Barry, preachers of the gospel, women, organizers. You've organized a great historical event. You have helped to unleash a great spiritual power of a great people. How good it is to hear the sounds of chains and shackles breaking from the ankles and minds of men. How beautiful it is to see the rejected stones stand up to become the cornerstones of a new spiritual and social order. And to Minister Farrakhan and that host executive committee they worked so diligently to bring this march into being let's give them a tremendous loving respectful round of applause in the spirit of atonement we pray to god to forgive us for our sins and the foolishness of our ways as we seek to do better and never to become bitter, and let nothing, nobody, stand between us and the love of God. The idea of a million men has touched a nerve deep in the hearts of people yearning to breathe free. Big meetings were never allowed 
on the plantation. We've always yearned for a big meeting. Today, we've left the plantation. This is a big meeting. Raw nerves of ancient longings for dignity has been touched. I wish that Dr. King, Mr. Muhammad, Malcolm, Floyd McKissick, Medgar Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, Daisy Bates, Bayard Rustin, Paul Robeson, Cleve Robertson, Mr. Michaud, Whitney Young, Clarence Mitchell, Roy Wilkins, and Thurgood Marshall could see us now. America will benefit and ultimately be grateful for this day when the rising tide for racial justice and gender equality and family stability lifts the boat stuck at the bottom, all boats benefit. Why are we here today? Because we're under attack by the courts, legislatures, mass media with the spies. Racists attack us for sport to win votes. We attacked for sport to make money. But I tell you today, rabbit hunting ain't fun when the rabbits stop running and start fighting back. Here we are in 1995 trying to stop 1996 from becoming like 1896, the end of Second Reconstruction. Mr. Muhammad said, when we come into ourselves and know our truer selves, we'll have our place in the sun. Fannie Lou Hamer said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So the Truth said to the feminist movement that she sought justice between white and black women, Ain't I a woman? Martin Luther King Jr. said, when he rescued Rosa Parks, better than we walk in dignity than ride in shame. Why are we here today? Because we will not surrender. We will not bow. We choose life, but if we must die, let it be nobly and not like dogs, Claude McKay said. We come here today because there is a structural malfunction in America. It was structured in the Constitution. They referred to us as three-fifths of a human being legally. There's a structural malfunction. That's why there's a crack in the Liberty Bell. There's a structural malfunction. They ignored the Colonel Report. Now we have the burden of two Americas, one half slave and one half free. Lincoln said it could not exist. Why was the reaction to the O.J. verdict so different? Because there were wounds unhealed. There was more vile and venom toward an integrated jury that voted unanimous than a racist policeman who perjured himself. Why did blacks and whites see it so differently? One man standing up, looking down on an apple, sees red and that which is delectable. Another man standing on the bottom, looking up, sees rot and sees worms. We all have a right to eat the fruit. None should have the obligation to eat the worms and eat the rot. We want an America where all of us are playing an even playing field by one set of rules. Why march? Dr. King said it was the shameful condition of the Negro. Today, it's disgraceful. Why do we march? Because our babies die earlier, infant mortality. Why do we march? because we're less able to get a primary or secondary education. Why do we march? Because the media stereotypes us. 
we are projected as less intelligent than we are, less hard work.